1300 aims to be both an evolution and a return to form for the series. This newest entry will let you build and conquer a world with endless possibilities as you discover the 19th century and lead your own industrial revolution. Workers and farmers are the backbone of your island and have many needs to be tended to to ensure their happiness. Make sure they're well fed, clothed, clean and not too overworked and your growing city will flourish. Increasing your city's attractiveness keeps the populace happy and even attracts visitors. But there will always be a push and pull between attractiveness and progress. The new newspaper feature shows the impact your decisions have made on your citizens. You can always change these negative stories for propaganda, but that can have consequences of its own. As your empire grows, so will your alliances and trade routes. This will take you far from your starting island, but nowhere is as breathtaking and unique as the New World. Once discovered, the New World will become a crucial extension of your empire, giving access to resources needed to propel you into a wondrous new age. But beware, the more you expand, the more complicated your relationships with other leaders become. You may have to fight, for what's yours.
Hello. Hello. This is uh, YCJY. I'm Joseph and Christopher. And Christopher. Uh, we're just going to play uh, 10 minutes of a Sea Salt. Uh, we're going to play the forest level with the base apostle, which is Agra de Pesca. Which starts off with 25 swarm. And, uh, yeah, he's the apostle you start the game with. He's very, very basic. He has no like super special powers, but he's very good still. He has to start with a nice little army of swarmers. Uh, yeah, and so in the beginning of every level, we'll have these little mood things, and then uh, here we go. So these these guys that I'm attacking now, they are the villagers, and they drop gold. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can uh, if you have enough gold. I think it's a thousand gold now. You can uh, buy a summon because you can increase your army when you go to the summoning circles, which are these. Yeah. Uh, and they, they're always free. You can always go to them and, and uh, get new minions if you can. So I'll go up to it. Uh, and here you get to select new minions. Um, so I'm gonna go with uh, just classic cultist uh, ranged character. Um, but yeah, on the top left corner you can see the gold when I pick it when I when I kill a villager or pick up there you go. You see it. Um, go goes up to a thousand and I get to. Uh, uh, buy a new yeah. free summon, and now he has 230 gold, so he has a little bit of weight to go. Uh, so yeah, the, as you're seeing, what I'm doing while playing the game is I'm a, I can move this the marker, which is in the middle. The, the yellow thing? Yeah. And, uh, and then by holding down uh, space or... Uh, a, or the right trigger. The right trigger, uh, I, I'm attacking. So all the minions, they kind of want to attack anything that's around them, and they have a priority of... Uh, trying to get the hunters and not barricades and all that. Uh, then there's also the, the other button, which is uh, the left trigger. Left trigger yeah. Yeah. And uh, then I can keep the army together. So I'll move as slow as the slowest minion, uh, which is really good for maneuvering through tight areas and just keeping your army together. Uh, yeah, let's go to the next room. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is the, 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 if you don't count the tutorial, this is the second level of the game. So like, like the second area. Yeah. Um, so here we see a, a lady with. Oh, you gotta watch out for those guys. Oh, yeah, those guys are hard. Uh, they're really devastating against, like, swarm, because uh, they die in one hit. And yeah, you have to avoid. You see them charging their attack, and then you shouldn't be close to them. Yeah. And now I chose flies, which are a really fast minion. So they don't do too much damage, but they're really quick. Um, okay, now I gotta watch out for this. Yeah, there's a ballista here. So a good thing to do here is to use your fly. Ah, you can just move past it as well. Because there's a guy operating the ballista. If you just scare him, the ballista won't work because there's no one operating it. So that's a good thing to know on the on the ballistas. Here. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, scaring characters is a huge part of sea salt. Yeah, uh, that those blue things that come out of their heads. Uh, that's. That shows or indicate like that they're scared. Yeah, it's a, like an indication that they won't attack you. Yeah. So it, a lot every every type of minion it has like a fear meter or how hor horrifying they are. Um, so like cultists, for example, they're not very scary. No, they have actually they have, they have zero uh, yeah. of, uh, of the horror stat. Because like people are just like oh they're just they're just like us. Yeah, like they're people. crazy. They're crazy people. Yeah. Um, well. Flies, maybe they don't have too much either. But yeah, I think they have one. I like most like of the basic ones, like the worms, the swarm, yeah. the small ones. They have one, uh, which is like they count as one scary. But then they are like, if you go to the fishmen, uh, yeah. if you have them, uh, they are way scarier. Uh, so they count as like, uh, I, I think they have five of a horror stat now. So they count as five swarm. So they they can scare some enemies that the swarm can't scare. But at the same time, if you have a lot of swarm, that counts to a lot of horror as well. So I think that's a good some good slaughter right there. Yeah. And then oh, make sure I get past this. Get those guys. Yeah, and you can look around with the with the right stick to see what's ahead of you. So you see there's a ballista and there's a special enemy up to the left there, which is a hunter. And this is, uh, since this is the second level, you have encountered this type of enemies before. 
and they are much uh, harder than your normal enemies, as you will see in a, in a second. They, unlike the other characters, they get scared, or they don't get scared. Yeah. Uh, so they they try to try not to get very close. So they they run around and they uh, shoot a lot more often, uh, as well as dodging. Yeah. So they, if you surround them, they can dodge out of your your attacks. Um, so just gotta make sure like to overwhelm them completely. Yeah, and then it's fine. If there are a lot of smaller enemies and maybe there are some hunters there as well, your priority should be to either dispose of the small enemies as fast as you can, or just focus everything you got on the hunter, because otherwise he will just tear through your army. So this is going pretty good. Come yeah. on. And now you actually have a thousand golds now as well, yeah. so you can buy a, a summon. Well, I'm just gonna keep this. And one thing, to do, a good thing to do is to like look around, like to scout if you have the gold, yeah, uh, and just be like, all right, what do I, what do I need here? Yeah. So there are two lumberjacks. They're they're weak against ranged minions. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ranged here. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to get more cultists, and then I'll go. And as of now, there's no indication of like when or how you buy stuff, but. Yeah. It's still a work in progress, so it will be a little bit flashy up to the left when you have enough gold to buy, buy a summon. And I also have a summoning circle, circle right next to me. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to look at what, what's up here. Alright, there's two hunters. Um, Usually what's good against them is like fast melee units, so you already have some flies, which are very good. Maybe you get more flies? Yeah, maybe more flies or... Like regular swarm? Yeah. I don't know. I think. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is uh, this is the the other build. In the new build, you get more swarm. I, I think they're, they're quite weak in this one, but you should be fine. Yeah. So here, oh no, you want to kind of focus on one, but uh, just to make sure that you you really get them. Yeah. Uh, and try not to be afraid. And now I'm just like push him into the corner. And he's dead. Yeah. If you if you like hesitate and try to like avoid his attacks, yeah, he's just gonna he will like, punish you. Yeah. And that's also one of the things in Caesar. Well. Once you like realize that you actually are playing as the monsters, you, you shouldn't be scared of, of the of the enemies. Uh, you so are the scary yeah. one. Yeah. But you shouldn't be like too forward either. Like, kind of careful in some some respects, because like uh, if you just go charging in, like if, if I just go and pull in, like there I just died, and then I get this guy to move to me, uh, and then and now what happens to my army? It's all gone. Yeah, so that's also not. <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal. Not <laughs> ideal. Uh, and then, like, oh, now how am I going to get these guys? Uh, I'm just looking at one. Yeah, yeah. gone. Uh, oh, you have one fly left. Oh, I have a fly. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. Uh, but in uh, we, we, you can just retry, and when you retry, you go straight from the last level that you were at. Yeah, so you uh, keep, keep the army you had at the, at the start of the room, so... So now I can look around, I know this level, alright, there's even two summoning circles. This is no problem, if I just take it a little easier. Uh, I'll go fly, and then... I'll wait out that for this to... Another one. Oh, I know this guy's coming. Get this guy to go attack. Possibly there. But now my army is pretty big, and I can start with completely yeah. taking over. With one more lumberjack yeah. being careful of. And when he's dead. Just trying to chase down all the uh, archers and enjoy the archers. Yeah. Now you have another summon, One and you don't summon. know what's next. Oh well, no. we know, but <laughs> if you were here, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, some more fishmen, just because. Yeah, no. they're nice. They're, they're much tankier than the swarm. They're a bit slower, but uh, and you don't get as many, but uh, they're very, very strong. And they're very scary. And here we have uh, the second hunter uh, that's encountered. Yeah. So th this is like the shotgun guy, but he has a flamethrower. Uh, but yeah, he, d he also doesn't get scared, and he's a bit more difficult. So you really have to like try to. Oh, that's not going well. Lost all, this, all my focus. Yeah. There are also some irritating molotov throwers here. Yeah. Try to take them first, maybe. 
This guy is way slower than the. Oops. Oh, that was not good. Way slower than the, the shotgun hunter. Oh yeah, you're not doing I'm good. Not, I'm not doing good. Alright, well, uh, that's 10 minutes. I uh, hope you enjoyed <laughs> that, those 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah I, I, I hope this kind of explains the game more, because it, it, I don't know if uh, it's a hard game to explain like with, uh, without showing really how to play. Um, but yeah, this is, this is Sea Salt. This is 10 minutes of it. Yeah, and we're probably going to upload some more of these videos. Uh, maybe with some dev stuff, I'm not sure. Whatever is fun to watch yep yeah let us know uh just comments and uh yeah tell us what you think bye thank you welcome to this record mode let's play for total war three kingdoms this video will highlight some of the differences between the two game modes records and romance which you choose from at the start of a campaign we're going to jump into the records mode campaign playing as gonzong zan and we're 150 turns in Quite a lot has gone on since the breakup of the coalition, so before we get stuck into the battle, let's have a look and see what we've achieved so far. It's autumn in the year 220 CE, 30 years since the Han lost its grip. We're making a healthy profit from our trade agreements and vassals, and because we have a non-aggression pact with Liu Bei, we don't need to spend it all on securing our borders, which has allowed us to save up some cash. We'll need this cash in our supply when we start making our power plays for Emperor. Now, let's look at our vassals. First, the Duchy of Song, previously Yuan Shao, has been our vassal for a while and is now weak since his death and his son is yet to come of age. We have expanded and surrounded this territory, making up the north of China, using the Yellow River as a border between us and Liu Bei, who now claims his lands as the kingdom of Shu Han. Our other vassal is Hang Chong, who recently pledged his allegiance to us after a short war which forced him to bend the knee. If we head down to the campaign map, we can see Gongsung San on the border of our territory neighbouring Ma Chao, son of the now deceased Ma Teng. We are within touching distance of the toolmaker resource of Anding, our first target. Though Ma Chao's forces lie in wait, ready to reinforce. This battle will be tough, but we can take it, especially considering the characters we have in our force and the ancillaries they bring to the fold. Gongsun Zan wields the strategies of the warring states, gifting his entire army guerrilla deployment. This will allow us to rush in on the garrison army, avoiding some of the tower fire on our approach. Next we need to equip the Stone Archer to our strategist, Jiang Wudai. This will give 10% extra ammunition to all the archers in our army, giving a slew of extra bolts for our repeater crossbowmen, which could prove crucial to our victory. Let's make our move toward the resource. Do not yield! Be unrelenting! We can see that the garrison force numbers at around 960, though their ranks are made up of mainly militia. They should be relatively easy for us to crush. Ma Chao, however, has much higher tier units, as well as being a more than capable warrior himself, so we will need to prepare for his reinforcements. Let's jump right into the battle. First things first, let's take a look at the map. This battle will take place in a toolmaker resource map, one of the many different types of resource maps in Total War Three Kingdoms, all featuring unique geography. We can see they also have arrow towers at the entry points to the town, so we'll need to get through those gates as quickly as possible. Now to our army. We have a well-balanced force here with two units of axe bands, providing good flanking ability, and four Xi'an sword guards, who will act as our front line for Xiao Yun's retinue. Gongsun Zhan himself brings our shock cavalry, as well as three units of Ji infantry, which will help us take down Ma Chao's unique cavalry. Our strategist, Jiang Wudai, has brought two units of archers, two units of repeater crossbowmen, and two white horse fellows, Skirmish cavalry unique to Gonzong Zan's faction. Gonzong Zan himself was known far and wide for his white horses, which famously kept the Mongols from attacking the north. Taking a closer look at the horsemen in his retinue, we can see that they all ride these famous white horses into battle. So here we are on the battlefield, and we can see that a storm has fallen on this toolmaker resource. Straight ahead of us we have these arrow towers, which will be our entry for our main forces. In the centre of the map, we have a capture point, this will provide a huge morale boost to our forces if we take it, so the enemy will try to defend this. First things first, we're going to move Gonsung Zan and the rest of our cavalry to that right flank. They're going to try and flank around this right side so we can break in as quickly as we can. We're going to get our axe band men and put them on the left side to spread that enemy force a bit thinner. And we're going to get the bulk of our forces and put them facing towards this central tower. 
Utilizing our guerrilla deployment here, which is available from the ancillary we have equipped on Gongzheng Zan, and moving our whole army within touching distance of the enemy. Every minute's gonna be key here. We've got our axe band men fighting on that left flank, and we're gonna charge our cavalry as fast as they can into that swordsman unit there. As you can see, everyone's in walk mode, that's on by default for me, and that's just so that we can save stamina for fighting, as the units will be less effective the more tired they are, and this has much more of an impact on records mode. As you can see, the range of fire for these repeat across pipemen is much shorter, so we're going to move them up on the hill here to get a bit of a flank, and so they can shoot into the side of these units that are defending this tower. So we're getting our axe bandmen charging on that left flank and get our swordsmen charging through the middle. Simultaneously, obviously our cavalry are now hitting this right flank and are going to melt right through those sword militia. Most of the units in this garrison are militia, so they're not going to be too difficult for, for our cavalry to deal with, as they are heavy cavalry. And obviously our axe bandmen are now making a charge, as our swordsmen have in the middle. And these guys are really going to have it in for them because they are outnumbered. Really what they're doing is just trying to distract the enemy. Obviously with our shorter range of fire, we've got our repeater crossbowmen on the right flank. And we're actually going to stop our heavy crossbowmen from fighting as they have a longer range. That will be much more useful later in the battle. So our cavalry have managed to defeat the two units of swordsmen. and just have one unit of sabre cavalry, which are going to be really easy for them to kill. So we're going to get our main bulk of cavalry on the right side and we're actually going to get our white horse fellows who are really good in melee to attack on this left hand side. Obviously they're unique to Gonsung Zan so we're going to utilise them in every way we can. Gonsung Zan going in wiping out the sabre cavalry nice and quickly. As we mentioned speed is going to be key for victory here. So as you can see, our repeat across moment does some great damage on that front flank and we've managed to break through as they are retreating. So we'll move the rest of our forces through um, to destroy that last unit of swordsmen in the middle there. So our infantry are doing some great impact there. As you can see, our um, White Horse fellows have actually done a lot of damage to that cavalry unit, really outmatching them. And we're starting to break through now and we'll be able to kind of form up whatever defence we decide to choose. We're going to start Gonzazan moving down towards this melee fight, just in case we don't break through. As you can see, we've taken quite a lot of losses to our front line, with almost half of the units that have fought already depleted. So as you can see, we're breaking through. Our axe band men are still fighting their left side. What we're actually going to do is get all of our range to move them up a bit closer so they're ready to come in once the fighting is done, and get Zhao Yun and Zhang Wudai to move up as well. We're going to get our G infantry to make a line up at the top and we're going to get our Jian sword guard to make a defensive line on this flank on our left which will defend our ranged which will also split out the enemy a bit as well as we need to divide and conquer. We're going to move our ranged units into the settlement now so they can begin firing and line up our men on this left side. Get moving! Let's get our archers moving into the settlement to join the rest of our units who are now lining up and taking their defensive positions, ensuring we have secure flanks. Gonsu Zan and the rest of our cavalry are walking to the back of our defence here, ensuring they regain some energy. Being in walk mode doesn't recover as quickly as standing still, but will improve it slightly. Now what we're going to do actually here is get our White Horse Fellows and move them up round and try and get a flank on the infantry that are coming in with Ma Chao's army. We are also going to put our G infantry into spear wall formation and our Jian sword guard into shield wall formation. This enemy swordsman unit you can see here is a currently known bug. All of the exits around them are blocked so they can't work out where to run. We have notified Dev of this bug. So let's just put them out of their misery here. Your best is not good enough! 
Shut up and die! Cao Ling and Zhang Wudai giving each other some fighter talk there. Even though warlords work differently in records mode, they still interact with each other on the battlefield. So our white horse fellows are just firing at some men that are still retreating, but what we're going to do is we're going to move them up around the top here, as I said, to try and get a flank on. As we can see here, Gongsun Zhang is very tired. He's had his fair share of fighting already today, but he's not done yet. So we're going to stop them moving and get them to recover some energy. Now the unit has rallied and the AI is pulling it back to regroup with other units. We can reform our line into shield wall formation. And we've got the nice little bit of rock face which is defending the center between these two lines of infantry we've got set up. We can now see the infantry are starting to make their way through up the top of the map if you look at the top of the screen. And we'll move our range a little bit closer and see what they can do. Obviously the Axe Bandmen are taking a lot of losses and we can't really get to them so they are a bit of a lost cause. What we're going to do is we're going to get our ranged units to give a bit of supporting fire. And now these White Horse fellas are starting to take a bit of damage. So what we're going to do is put them in loose formation, which is obviously going to reduce the amount of damage they take and hopefully mean they can get a bit of a charge onto those heavy crossbowmen which are stuck at the back. Now, Gonsig Zan and his cavalry, they're now very tired, so they're getting there. They're getting, they're getting on the road to recovery. We'll just keep an eye on them and we'll, we'll use them momentarily. Um, these Axe Bandmen do a great job at defending that corner. The cavalry is still recovering, and the more we wait, the more impactful they will be when we find our moment to use them. The rest of our forces are in a good position, but that's only because our White Horse fellows have drawn all the range fire away. We will need to start moving up soon. Our men flee the battlefield. It's really not looking good for these fellows. What we can see is the beginning of a divide between the enemy infantry and their superior ranged units as they are distracted by our white horse fellows on that flank. So what we're going to do is move our G infantry up to create a safe pathway for the rest of our cavalry to move around and flank their units. The G infantry will prevent any of their infantry from blocking our move here and we will put them into spear wall formation too to make them stronger. Our white horse fellows have managed to do a tiny bit of damage there Overall, their biggest play in this battle has been distracting Ma Chao's ranged units. Our men flee the battlefield. So our ranged units have now used up a lot of ammunition, uh, but what it has meant is those Axe Band units have actually managed to make it through. We're going to try and get one little charge off and try and just see what damage they can do, but unfortunately it looks like the arrow towers there are going to wipe out the remainder of that unit. So let's just try and get a bit of fire on the, the strategist that has just accidentally walked into our range. You are weak. Your words are as pathetic as you are. So they're still pretty tired, these units here. But we'll get them moving faster as we need to utilize this exposed flank. So we'll move Zhang Wudai up a little bit and we'll use the rest of this ammo with these guys to just get some damage into that cavalry. And they're now in range of our repeater crossbowmen as well, which is great. So they're now taking a lot of range damage, which is probably going to force them. It's going to force them to make a decision. They've either got to charge in or move back. Now our spearmen at the top there are taking a lot of damage from this range fire, so we really do need to get a move on. The men have no ammunition. Draw your weapons. Horses, stand ready. So we're going to put them into wedge formation to do a bit more charge damage, doing it as late as possible so we're moving quickly, as wedge formation does reduce our overall speed. So this is perfect. This takes out such a such a huge advantage for them. As you can see, one of their units, they've got such great range on them. One unit has already used all of its ammo, destroying some of our units. We're actually going to move the rest of our units up and we'll also put them in guard mode momentarily so they stop chasing any other units. Unfortunately, our heavy crossbowmen have used all their ammo, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to move up and try and try and put a bit of pressure on Ma Chao and the rest of his forces here. We're going to move the, the swordsmen and create a wall there, and we're going to use the heavy crossbowmen, which have used all their ammo, to just be a defensive line to prevent any flanking. And we're actually going to take a look and see who's got the most energy here. So I think it's, yeah, Gonzig Zan and Zhao Yun. And let, let our other guys rest and just regain some stamina before we go in for more charges. Because if not, they're just not going to be as effective in battle. 
while these two just mop up that. They've, they're again, heavy cavalry, so should be fine on these heavy crossbowmen. It is fun to watch you improve. Focus your efforts on the enemy, perhaps. The time has come. Take heed, warriors. Hold Our steady. men are running. The spineless coward. So our repeat crossbowmen can moving. take start taking some shots at those swordsmen. Go. And we're going to use our heavy crossbowmen in guard Add mode to try and defend this left flank um, so that our swordsmen don't get overwhelmed. Zhao Yun and Gonzo Zan have managed to wipe out that remaining heavy crossbowmen unit, meaning they no longer have any range left, um, which is obviously really great for us, as they were some of the stronger units for us to deal with. Unfortunately, our Raider Cavalry can go out of control and have done here. You are too pathetic to survive. I will crush you for this insult. And they are just charging towards the nearest enemy, which happens to be the Swordsman, which isn't the worst engagement, but obviously we'd much rather keep keep our men in, in file, really. Look, the enemy run. Craven quarrels. March now. I repeat, your crossbowmen are actually out of range at the moment. What we're going to do is going to move everyone back into this shield wall formation and just push forward so we can try and get in range of Marchau and his generals there. So we're just going to take this capture point so we're not taking any unnecessary range fire. And our cavalry that rampage has actually come back, so we're going to move them back up with the rest of the cavalry. So we've defeated that, that last unit of spearmen for them. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these guys and we're going to move them forward and just create a nice line to, again, divide and conquer and block them up. So let's take a look at the lay of the land. We've got a lot of fighting up at the top, but we still have very secure flanks, which is great for us. And we're starting to box them towards where they wanted to go initially and use that to our advantage. Like we're just going to move our cavalry out of there so we can fight as a group rather than alone. Prepare. Crossbows, attend. So I repeat the crossbowmen and managed to just get a few volleys off there, but it won't do too much damage. Now what we're going to do, this swordsman unit has quickly exposed itself. We're going to see if we can do some damage to it. See if we can kill it just before these spearmen get here. Uh, they're going to need a bit of help from the rest of the cavalry to try and get through as quick as we can before this bunch of spearmen manage to make it up to us. We're just trying to divide and conquer these, these groups, really, because we're overwhelmed by the enemy forces, so we can't really win if they're all bunched up together. We're just trying to divide and conquer these groups. We're heavily outnumbered in this battle, so splitting them out, we improve our chances of winning. The enemy unit flees! What cowards! And obviously the spearmen are trying to chase our cavalry, which we don't want. Hopefully we can get them out just in time. We, we hung on for a, maybe a little bit too long there, trying to get rid of that swordsman unit, but at least they did rout, which takes another one out. And this does, again, we've boxed them in, and we've, we've divided these swordsmen on the left and this cavalry from their spearmen. Uh, Ma Chao has now had to make the decision to move in. So obviously we're gonna, we've got our swordsmen, he's riding into the swordsmen, which do have a charge resistance buff because they're in that shield wall formation. But obviously that's not gonna be a battle to be able to withstand for too long. So now we're just going to line our spearmen up here um, because what we want to do is create a, a rear flank for our cavalry to charge into. So we're going to try and get all their spearmen to engage on us here. You are pitiful. Do not waste your breath. You will need it. Which means we can get a great rear charge off with our cavalry and hopefully route the rest of these units, meaning we can focus on the rest of the battle that's going on in the centre. Uh, we're going to get our cavalry to flank right back here because they actually might need to go support these sword units quicker than we think. Um, so let's get our range guys, make sure they're firing here. Um, it's tempting to move those swordsmen round, but what we're going to do is to protect our flank, keep ourselves secure, and make sure we don't make any silly mistakes. So Gonzig Zan here, obviously leader of the White Horses, is going to lead the charge here into the rear of these spin. Improved in my estimations. Here he goes. Great rear charge. None of them turned round, which is great for us. Meaning, um, obviously, we're going for a bit of a hammer and anvil technique here. The enemy warriors are running. We're using this heavy cavalry to try and route the units. One of them is gone. Three left. But obviously, our men are starting to waver themselves. Um, so we actually need to be quick around the situation. Their cavalry, another charge. Obviously, they're in shield wall formation, which gives them a bit of charge resistance. 
So hopefully those guys aren't dead. Let's go for our second charge. We go for a great, hopefully another rear charge and clear out the rest of those units. But unfortunately it looks like they've actually managed to turn around just in time because that has done tremendous damage to both of our units. Take care you are not trampled on the hoop. Ready. Yep, we've been outplayed there. They managed to knock two thirds out of Gonsung Zan's unit out. And it looks like he actually might be retreating the battlefield along with one of the units of spearmen. But yep, that's it. Gonsung Zan has decided that's enough. He's going to leave it to Zhao Yun and Zhang Wudai to try and wrap up this battle. Uh, so we've got the rest of our units getting in here, getting involved in combat. Now, unfortunately, this does mean that if if Gonsugzan does fully retreat, we do really need to win this battle, because if not, there's a percentage chance he will be captured. Now, I unfortunately forgot to take them off skirmish mode there, which means they were running away from the combat, but I noticed just in time, which means they can still get involved in that in that fight and defend that flank against the G infantry. Now, we've already taken a lot of losses, obviously Gonsugzan probably being one of the biggest ones. But hopefully, this battle is swinging in our favour. As you can see, it's still relatively even at the bottom. So we're going to have to be, pick and choose these battles where we can, but it looks like they're very much they're in our hand. We've still got some ranged um, still got some range left. We've still got this cavalry left. A lot of their cavalry are bogged up in that fight there, um, which they had to take as they were taking ranged fire. But this has put ourselves in a great situation, um, getting one final flank off on those swords units. And we're actually going to push up to this victory point, which will mean that we'll get a morale boost. Um, and hopefully that would cause, be enough to cause a chain route. Do not relent. The enemy aren't looking in a great position now. It's, the balance of power is creeping up in our favour. We're going to get a charge off on these sword units. We can see that Ma Chao and Cao Ling are now starting to waver. They have unprotected flanks and we are now starting to take the capture point. Yep, that's it. It looks like Ma Chao isn't going to fight to the death. He's going to try and flee. What a coward. But of course, that's not what we want here. We need to take his life. The battle may be won, but we need to get him down. Zhao Yun has managed to chase him down with the remainder of his bodyguard and deal that final killing blow to Ma Chao. We can see here he's taking pride in this kill, which is going to help our faction rise to power. We can see piles of dead bodies and abandoned flags scattered across the battlefield. We've lost a lot of men today, but this victory was a worthwhile one. surplus nothing more here we have the post battle screen and we can see the losses we took it was a pyrrhic victory but a worthy one as it starts our power plays to becoming emperor obviously marchal's forces were absolutely decimated and only a small force managed to escape everybody weighed in and got some kills even zhang will die wrapping some up at the end even though he had a very supportive role throughout the battle looking closer at marchal's army we can see that him and all of his generals fell which was our main aim We're going to occupy this territory, and that will be it for this Record Modes Let's Play. It shows potential. And wisdom will follow. Thanks for joining us, and of course, Total War Three Kingdoms is coming out on May 23rd, so keep an eye out on upcoming content on our social media. Welcome to Steel Division 2 first skirmish video. Today we're gonna play as a Soviet commander. Our battle group will be similar to the one we created in the previous video. This game will be in closer combat mode on the small Orsha North map. Set in the outskirts of Orsha, this map features large wooded areas, a few swamps and of course a highway picturing the region surrounding this highly strategic area of Operation Bagration. From a tactical aspect, 
plateau offer a great advantage, allowing units a great field of view over the battlefield and large fields of fire. Two villages will be strong points for infantry, which will be extremely hard to unseat without direct fire artillery. The aim of the battle will be to push the front line forward in order to capture as much objective points as possible. We will put some 80 guns on the plateau here, which is a strong point, allowing us to cover the plains. We are using the line of sight, which now takes a difference of height into account to determine the best spot to place our units. We will also try to place some MGs in the houses here, in order to capture this village here on the right. In the central area of the map, we will place a recon unit in order to cover the village and identify enemy forces that might come from the roads. This recon unit will also allow us to see what's happening on the plateau on the opposite side. We will also try to capture the village on the left with some infantry. We will position some infantry in the farm and try to use the light forest cover to make our troops advance. On the right, our tactics is to surround the village by taking the farms around it. When these positions are secured, we will swoop the village and make it ours. We start our deployment by placing the recon units. Razyatka have powerful bazookas that will allow them to defend themselves. An MG will take this house here, as well as an artillerist equipped with a radio. Guardia units, very efficient at long range, will be supported by Avtomachikis to take the farm on the right. With their PPSH guns, they are truly deadly at short range. We are also placing a recon unit on the plateau on the right. It will help the tanks to spot the enemies in the plains. We'll place the long-range Guardia units in the village, hoping they will be able to hold the place. A Guardia unit is also used to capture the farms on the left. An Aftomachiki unit will be sent to cover the woods. We are using the line of sight to place the anti-tank unit in the best possible position to protect the road. We are placing another anti-tank unit on the plateau on the left to cover the plane. And another one is used to protect the farm on the right. As we have plenty of deployment points left, we can place an artillery unit. Before launching the battle, we are checking all the orders we have given. Let's play. We're configuring the small calibers 80 units on the efficient shot mode, which makes the units fire only if it has a 40% chance to hit. As we thought, the enemy tries to take the right flank. 
we are disembarking our units as fast as possible. The Germans are sending an ME410 to attack one of our T-34 on the other plateau. Stressed by the attack, the T-34 falls back. Panzer Grenadiers are trying to attack the farm on the right, but are held back by our Aftomachikis. Detected by our Rosvetka Rican units, the German troops lead a harmonious attack on the village with some Panzer 4H and two Grille. We're bringing tanks to counterattack their offensive and start to shoot at the incoming units with our 80 gun. From his own plateau, the T-34 manages to fire at the Panzer Grenadier on the side of the other plateau. We're using our SU-76M to support our advance and to unseat the cannonier. On the left, our mighty 53K 80 gun spots and destroys an enemy unit. And another one. A well-placed 80 gun with an efficient shot option activated can have a devastating effect. Our T-34, benefiting from a good field of view, shoots at the enemy units on the plateau. The last Valiant Guardia units are getting fired at by a Panzer 4H roaming in the streets of the village. We're bringing T-34 with their commanders to take back the village. The enemy ME-410 is back, but this time we're deploying a Yak-1B to hunt it. Unfortunately, it's a bit too fast and the attack fails. Sad times for the Normandy Neiman. We are sending our T-34-76 units to try to get the village back, but the counter-attack fails and our tanks are rooting. We are trying another tactics by discreetly sending Guardia units in the forest on the left of the village waiting for an order to do a synchronized attack. The second farm on the right being secured, it's time for us to push forward to the village on the top right of the map. Unfortunately, a Wild Tiger E appears and it would be suicidal to attack it from this position. Our Etigan, being set in efficient shot, will wait until reaching a 40% hit chance before firing on the Tiger. We are trying to bring our T-34 forward as a bait, in order to make the Tiger E turn in its direction, showing his weak spot to our anti-tank gun. Unfortunately, our T-34 is killed in the maneuver and our 80 gun ends up stressed. Our salvation will come from our Rasvyatka Rican armed with a bazooka which destroys the Tiger E after it came a bit too close. We're using our SU-76 artillery to fire on the village on the left in order to stress out the German units. We are also moving our T-34, boosted by a leader, to attack the village.
Our progression of the right side of the map goes well, and our Aftomachiki can deal easily with the enemy units in the forest. Our synchronized counter-attack on the village, involving our T-34 as well as our Guardia units hidden in the woods, seems to work like a charm. Unfortunately, the enemy is using the plateau across the village to fire at our units. We will need to wait until phase B to be able to deploy T-34-85 and SU-85 units to secure our positions definitely. On the left of the area, we are pushing forward to capture a third farm just before the start of phase B. We are now entering phase B. We're pushing forward our Maxim to the village on the right. Let's check what's happening on the left side. We make our Aftomachikis advance further to capture the third farm group. The enemy is bringing more forces to the village on the left and we are deploying Katyushas to calm them down. We are hiding our units behind the forest to contain a potential advance in the village. Our Katyushas are here and we are ordering them to strike the entrance of the village. Unfortunately, a well-placed Tiger E destroys our two T-3476. Our T-3485 finally destroys the Tiger E with two successive shots. The right side of the map is not well defended, and we'll use this opportunity to capture the arrival point on the top of the map. This will prevent the enemy to deploy more units from this point. Dominating this area could be a chance to cut the enemy front line from the top. We're bringing more T-34 on the top of the plateau on the right. In the meantime, on the left of the map, our 53k M80 gun identifies two incoming German units and manages to destroy one. The other one has the time to disembark its Panzer Grenadier before exploding. The Panzer Grenadiers stress out the 80 gun and eventually destroys it, a very tragic death of one of the true heroes of this battle. Joined by a third T-3485, the tanks move forwards to the village and stress out units on the plateau. The enemy sends an ME410 and stresses out one of our T-34. A Yak-1 is quickly deployed to chase it, but the enemy anti-air units are too dangerous. Fortunately, this aerial attack doesn't prevent our T-3485 to capture the village and secure the place for good. The left side is holding well. 
We are sending after Machikis to reinforce our positions here. We are moving our unit to the other farm in order to benefit from a wider field of view. As our units are getting fired at while moving, we are sending our React 1 in support. Feeling bold, we are sending the T-3485 to capture the plateau across the village. But the place is extremely well defended and we are losing a T-34. There is nothing to do now, every attempt is stopped by a very well placed Panzer 4H. In order to cover our unit advance, we are using smoke from our SU-76M. We are also sending an anti-air unit to counter the ME-410. Before the phase C starts, we are moving forward our defense. We are also sending some troops to the units which capture the arrival point. Now starts the phase C. On the left side, we are moving forward our Afto Machiki equipped with 10 PPSH. Our enemy stands no chance. We are sending tanks to the plateau to capture it with the help of the Guardia in the forest. We are trying a final push before the end of the game with a Katyusha shot and a tank assault on the plateau. The end of the battle is near and we dominated our enemy by capturing most of the control points. All the content you just saw will be available in the beta that will start on March 27th. Pre-order the game now to secure your access to the beta. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Welcome to uh, Conan Unconquered. Uh, we are a survival RTS. Uh, so what that means is basically we've taken you know a lot of the a lot of core concepts of RTS where you're managing your resources and trying to do this within a lot of time, right? And we added the survival aspect where you know uh, you can have to ex you can have to explore, you're going to have to fortify your location, um, and then you're going to be attacked by waves. Um, so the idea here, so oh, got a knock on the door. Um, so yeah, so the main objective here is to protect your HQ. So this here is your HQ. Now, uh, Conan Unconquered is loosely based on the uh, Black Colossus story. Um, and in that, one, in that story, basically, there's a princess who uh, has a dream, and the dream tells her that in order to save her kingdom, the first person she sees on the streets is the person that needs to command her armies, and in, the, in that case, it's Conan. Right, so that's kind of like the, the gist of it. Um, so what I have here um, is basically uh, a 
Yes, uh, it'll be a little bit different than um, when you guys start. Like this is, uh, I'm playing a, I'm playing a 25 wave map. Currently, I'm on wave 18, right? Um, I'm preparing for an attack. Um, so let's, I guess, let's just kind of see what's going on here. All right. So I'm looking over here at top, and I'm, I see that it's wave 18. I'm gonna have like a lot of dudes coming at me: some spearmen, some javelinaires, some horsemen, and, and catapults and necromancers, right? Now I could actually—they haven't arrived. They're not gonna arrive yet. So when the skull hits the end, that's when—that's when I know that they're on their way. I could see on the mini map the roughly the location that they're gonna come from, so I could kind of I could start setting up my uh, my protection. So for the most part, I, I've done a again. This is kind of advanced. Right, so I've, I've kind of expanded outward and I've created like as many choke points as I can with my own, uh, with, with, my, my, with my structures. I've built up my wall to have inside these, uh, inside these towers I have uh, units, range units ready and just getting ready to help defend here. So I got Conan right here, um, there's no audio, oh, right? I don't know if you want to... What's the point about the choke points? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, exactly. So every time that you play, it's a different map, and you have to kind of like see what you got to work with, right, in order to uh, to kind of create a safe environment for yourself and your and your people. All right. So let's see. So here I have a, a couple of uh, you know four swordsmen. Now, what's interesting about like all the units have like their unique role to fill, and the swordsmen basically it's our melee, and it also tends to. Uh, Taunt people. <laughs> attack wave approaching. So, let's see. Alright, so the attack wave is coming, so let's see if we can kind of hold them off. I know that this wave has some uh, catapults inbound. I'm also going to build, um, also going to build here this, this sunburst tower. So in case I have to fall back, I can fall back to my own tower and hopefully that'll, uh, that'll save me. Uh, I can see... Now, another thing about the map being randomly generated, there's like creeps that are kind of um, scattered all over the map and you're supposed to use them to like level up. I kind of triggered this one here and that's kind of, that's going to be a pain because now he's added to the battle. Alright, so I can see that the first part of the wave is here. I'm sending my soldiers forward. Now, they're definitely going to need some backup. Let's see, who do I have nearby? Alright, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna take the priest and the archers, I'm gonna send them forward and hopefully they can help these guys out. Uh, it would be nice to have the body right now. It would be nice to what? I have the body right now. Oh, it would! And that's, and that's kind of like the thing with co-op, right? Like, this gets kind of crazy and, and it does become a little overwhelming, right? But then I can kind of pause. But if I had a buddy, right, I could be like, okay, dude, I need you to take care of that west side because it's falling, right? And then during the pause mode, you could actually like give commands, right? So I'm gonna put my priest over here, priest over here, a couple archer here, archer here, and then hopefully I could save him. Ah, oh, no, he totally wrecked. Which means that that side has fallen. All right. Meanwhile, all right, we got Conan up here. Now the thing about that, all the heroes, uh, the heroes Conan and all the units. Uh, basically, the longer they're on the field, they gain experience and level up. So I'm going to have Conan do his spin before he dies, there you go, kill as many things as he can, and, oh, alright. So now we got into a point where I think I'm in trouble, right? Uh, I have skeletons that are being summoned because all, the, all, those, all those dead bodies, aside from creating diseases, there are certain units like the necromancers, which will actually like summon skeletons out, right? So. I've kind of got myself in a position where I'm, I'm kind of losing, um, <laughs> I'm kind of losing hang of everything here. Uh, so let's see. So all right. So these buildings just shut down. Basically, uh, in this game, you have um, in order to expand outward, you have to build these battle standards, which give you command, right? And that uh, that increases your build area. So I've lost that flag up there. So those buildings have, have shut down, which my gold economy is now at negative two. All right. So. In times like this, and this is something that I kind of um, built up to, I'm going to summon a god to kind of come help me out. So Mitra, right, is, uh, so this is something that I kind of tapped into, right? He's kind of like, kind of works kinda as a super weapon, right? And um, you have to build uh, temples in order to generate enough zeal, right? It's like another, another resource sink. 
but now I could use him while Conan's out, and he could help me squeeze the, you know, especially get rid of these uh, catapults. But yeah, oh, my plantations are gone. So see, they're affecting the, I mean, they were successful in, like, destroying my resource line. Let me get rid of this guy. Alright, Conan, come back. I need you out here. Come on, come on, come on. Great. Crush it. Thank you. There you go. And then I've successfully survived that wave. And wow, just at the last minute, he goes and disappears. So, while I was trying to defend uh, wave, uh, wave 18, now wave, uh, wave 19 is still inbound. Like, that did not stop. Right? So, right now that I have to do some repairs because even though my gold is pretty low and that's basically because everything shut down. Um, and let's see. Yeah, exactly. Like in, in Conan, uh, there's a couple of like hazards that happen. Like disease are one of them. Like if there's enough bodies piled up, it will actually create a, a, a cloud of disease that will affect your units. It'll slow them down or cause them to drop to half health. And there's also like another hazard of which we have, which is fire, which we'll probably get to see in the upcoming wave. Now I'm gonna start repairing some of my structures here. I think I got got these things back. Who's under attack? Okay, that he's, he's taken care of. Now that's another thing too, right? Like you tech up hard enough, you could actually set up automated defenses, right? Which will kind of help you from it will help hold the waves back. So I'm gonna try to defend here from the south side. Um, I need more dudes. Now the thing is that you don't generally just want to crazily generate dudes because each of them has like a cost, right? Like they will, uh, they, they demand an upkeep. So you kind of want to use what you have and, and make sure that it doesn't get destroyed. So let's see. All right. So I have a general idea of where they're coming from, right? And again, right, that's the whole concept. Like you're going to keep getting hit by wave after wave after wave. Uh, and then by looking at the list here, I could tell that the, the biggest things here are the fire catapults and the flame demons, right? Flame demons being the worst because they explode and light everything on fire that's nearby. So let's see. Alright, I'm going to send my cavalry out. Send the cavalry out to look for the... I want them to look for the catapults, right? And then some Conan up here. Some pikemen to help out. Yep. And that's also kind of a reason that, that you have to learn how to manage your space, right? Like I try to build things in clumps that were useful, but not enough so that the fire could affect it, uh, really cause issues. Okay, come on, Conan, we got this. Spin. Oh, and there we have one of the uh, fire demons. All right, I think I'm gonna have to pull Conan back. Come on. See, in a situation where like the, the battle gets too hectic, I could just pause and then again go back there. Okay, good. I could just pause whenever you want to. Um, there is like, for example, a a feat that is earned by not, right? And there's also like, yeah, by not pausing, and there's also like crom mode. Right, which definitely um, allows you to. Uh, it, it takes away the pausing, but hardcore. yeah, hard. Yeah, it's, it's definitely hard code mode. All right, so let's see. So I should be able to pull the back this wave, but in general, that's that's the gist of like Conan Unconquered. All right, let's see. Oh, there's there's this, the see my horses. Those are just both paper scissors and going on with. Yes, and then cavalry is really good against the uh, the catapults mainly because they can move faster and then just get there. And that and here's where we were talking about the fire thing, right? Like it's like okay, um, those guys in there are are protected, but I gotta I gotta get rid of this. Oh, oh, and Conan died. Just yeah, he's just he's just a little tuckered out. Uh, I rolled an ankle. Okay. 
And you can send your your units as well to take out the fire. Just, yeah. yeah. Put some sand on it. Although they will prioritize. Oh, there you go. Let's, yeah, start putting out some fire guys because we're never getting nowhere. So. Another thing too, because this is somewhat part simulation, right? I hit the V key to change the uh, change the view, right? Which kind of makes it a little bit easier in certain situations than you know than this type of perspective. But yeah, that's generally it. Yeah.
This is Papa Bear. Units report. Over. Green one, this is Papa Bear. Move to the LZ. Over. Papa Bear, this is Green one. Moving to the LZ. Out. Alpha, this is Papa Bear. What's the encounter's outcome? Over. This is Alpha. We are exchanging fire with enemy. Runs at three, five, seven. Green one, this is Papa Bear. Scotty, we have to evacuate those boys as fast as possible. Over. Man down. We are taking casualties. Force those Viacon rats! Roger, get ready for fireworks. 